Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the NeuroBytes podcast, where we talk about everything AI and automations. I am your host today, Helena, and we have Ori and Chris with us. Ori is um, probably the best, actually not probably, is the best uh, AI artist that I have ever met. And we're going to talk about all things AI art today. So welcome, Ori and Chris, to the podcast. Howdy. Thanks. Good to be here. Be here, yeah. I mean, Ori, can you start off by telling us a little bit about your story, how you transitioned from being an artist and AI artist, and how that whole journey came about? So apparently, I was an artist like my whole life. I just didn't realize it until um, I stopped making art for ten years, and then gave away uh, before the ten years was up. Gave away my stuff. Went on a road trip for six years, based on whose couch I'm crashing on next, and. Uh, when I was in Maui, my buddy took me to some galleries and all of a sudden I realized, ouch, I haven't been doing the thing that was always my thing. You don't really hear parents telling their kids, oh, you know, you should grow up and be an artist. You'll make lots of money and have job security. You know? And they're like, oh, why don't you go work at McDonald's? You'll work. Oh, wait, that's my parents who say that. But um, so, uh, but yeah, you know, it, it just hit me that for 10 years, I haven't done my thing. And so I, I started doing a uh, daily work of art, which I did for over 4,300 days in a row. And uh, I got pretty good at it. And I also, it, it helped uh, I've always been big on digital. Um, my my dad was into gadgets and gizmos and the computers before it was cool. But um, yeah, it's always uh, a lot of it is about efficiency. And um, I'm always I also get bored easily. You might guess. So uh, I uh, I just kind of play with every toy I can get my hands on. And I was doing this daily art while I was traveling, while I was bouncing around. And after a couple thousand days, you kind of need to go digital or you're going to need a Costco sized warehouse to store all the art. And I've done 3D uh, modeling, animation, rendering, and uh, I've done uh, videography and photography and, you know, the whole painting and all that stuff. So all these tools really come together and I'm, I'm just comfortable with all things uh, digital. When AI came out, actually, it's a kind of a cute story. I I started playing with AI tools like there were a lot before there was prompting, but mm -hmm. all this prompting stuff, man. I thought that was in a bunch of art groups on Facebook, and I was like, man, these are just for losers who you know can't make real art. You know, they're not real artists. So and obviously, I've changed my mind since then. But, you know, I kept seeing prompting, prompting, prompting. And the quality was just way before Mid Journey and all that stuff. The prompting uh, or the quality kind of sucked. And then Mid Journey came out. And, um, you know, I kept seeing all this prompting, prompting. Finally, I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's just get this out of the way. And then I can say I did it. And everyone can leave me alone about prompting. prompting. Yeah. So I said, I'm just going to type something in that's going to completely embarrass the computer and then we can laugh about it because obviously there's no way a computer could know anything about the stuff that I know about because it's just a computer. <laughs> so I type in slash imagine. And uh, if you haven't used MidJourney, now you know the command to use it. You type slash imagine, which means show me. And then you yeah. type whatever you want. That's the problem. So I typed slash imagine. The joys of ketamine, because look at a computer possibly know about that. And yet the computer gave me a really damn good picture. And I was like, nice to meet you. I'm Ori and we're going to be friends. And I've never looked back. And um, man, it has been a, a lifesaver, but I'll save that for further questions. Otherwise, it's going to be one really long question answer thing. So. <laughs> That's how I got into it. Love the story. Love it. Love the story. Um, I know you you use a lot of like uh, Mid Journey and um, Stable Diffusion and other tools. Can you kind of tell us like the kind of AI tools that you're using and the pros and cons of them? Yeah, um, I like them all. Uh, my favorite is all right. First thing for those listening. 
I want you to know, no tool is perfect. Hardly and none of them are going to give you exactly what you want if you've got high standards. And uh, so uh, what I want you to do or to remember is that you're not limited to the output right. that any of them give you, but they all do amazing things. Each one's got their own pros and cons. And so you can take what it gives you and you can toss the output of one into the other and then toss that into Photoshop or Photopia, Photopia, however you pronounce it, which is a free version and mix them together and then toss them back into another one. So it becomes a workflow instead of just using a single tool. Midjourney does have the best imagination. It does super high quality They've just added text, and they put that in air quotes, because uh, you still got to try a couple of times. But if you're looking for inspiration on a look and a style of a layout you might want to do, like, hey, take what it gives you as a layout and toss that into a designer on Fiverr and say, I want something like this, but I actually wanted to get the letters right, you know, and have say this. That's a great starting point that's going to save you tons of time because it's great at imagining. Um, Midjourney is not as censorious, which you can't spell without Ori, as it used to be. Um, I've uh, actually, when we met, Helena, and you guys uh, saw my demo on things that Midjourney cannot do. And since then, you still can't do a bunch of those, but you can now, for example, you can type in the words black cocker spaniel and not get banned. Uh, you know, for anyone who's not familiar with them, they're an adorable little uh, dog that's, you know, uh, apparently offends people for some reason. I don't know. But uh, now when you, you know, f get flagged as like being offensive, you can click the hey, I didn't do anything wrong, but and they'll evaluate and go, oh, you know what? Yeah, go for it. And it will give you the small, cute dog. Um, if you want other uses uh, that sound similar to that spelling, though, you can use Midjourney, or sorry, Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion is, all right, so Midjourney costs money. And they have a couple platforms, a couple levels. Um is it cool if I throw in a bunch of other tidbits that yeah, are not really yeah, the question, sure. but it can help people's careers and stuff? Absolutely. Okay. The law. I know. The last thing that people would expect to hear from me. Although I had a couple of run-ins with them recently. So, um, the law. Uh, copyright. Anything that you just prompted, you, you, you can't copyright. It's a machine created it, just like the, the paintings that the elephants make. No, it's got to be human done. Uh, so um, I recommend that if you're using Midjourney, you pay the fancy schmancy account, uh, I think it's $60 a month, which is not expensive and it's not cheap. I mean, it, considering how much work it saves you, you know, if you're going to hire one designer on Fiverr or, you know, and you extracting the or subtract the frustration and all the mistakes and all the back and forth. $60 for a month of basically unlimited usage is uh, is pretty awesome. Now, uh, but if you get into cheap account, $10 or whatever, um, that's cool. Use it. Go for it. But by default, sorry, um, but you don't get to turn off public mode, meaning your work is automatically posted to the gallery, meaning anyone can copy it. And since you've got zero yeah. copyright protection, I can go through the Mid Journey Gallery right now, see some spectacular work, and just take this and this and this and go and put them on shirts or mugs or whatever I want and start selling them. And there ain't nothing anyone can do about it because, uh, hey, you can't, copyright. you got no legal copyright on it. But, oh, and here's the funny thing about uh, one question that was like making me pull out a lot of my hair, obviously not for very long because still got a bunch of this stuff, but is uh, how does anyone know if something is just prompted or not? Well, I mean, if it's on the Mid Journey Gallery, that's a pretty clear sign. But um, basically for the Copyright Office, if you're trying to claim 
it's self-disclosure. So it's like, you know, when, when cops show up and you want to say, yes, I've got drugs and guns and all that stuff. Well, why turn yourself in, you know, like protect your work. Even a prompt is intellectual property. And it's not as easy as people think like, oh, just show me this and that. It is because it will do that. But if you want some equality, every single one of the images behind me ugh, leveraged AI and prompting, but it was a whole bunch of prompting and a whole bunch of manual labor. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't give away the prompt. There's a lot of arguments about that. But anyway, so if you want your, if you're using your work commercially and you don't want people to rip it off uh, indiscriminately, then yes, get the fancy version if you're using Mid Journey. And um, make sure that you go into slash settings. Now you've learned your second mid-journey command and um, push enter and uh, turn off public mode, which is on by default. Hmm. Anyways, uh, stable diffusion is my favorite uh, because it is. Uh, yeah, there's there's a uh, there's a couple flavors of it. But but generally, so there, there's a lot of platforms online like Leonardo.ai and um, I don't know, uh, Playground or OpenAI. Open. Dolly. Do, well, Dolly is not Stable Diffusion. Dolly is no. Dolly. Um, but but Stable Diffusion, um, you can download it for free. It, it is free. It's it's not. It's open source, meaning you can run it, you can modify the code, you can use the code as is, you can sell it. So uh, that app that everyone was using to make their selfies and all that stuff, I forgot the name, but it like that was it was the number one most popular app on the App Store, and it was making more than a million dollars a day after a while. And that's just using uh, Stable Diffusion. They didn't have to pay to um, develop all the code. Um, so that's one usage of it. it API, right? This they point. they got they got the API, and but you, you can also just download the thing, modify the code, make your own interface. There's a bunch of plugins because yeah. it's open source. You get the open source community, which wow, is spectacular. There's new features. Like I I went on a road trip for like a month and a half, and now I feel like I'm I'm living in the 50s or something because so much has changed in the last month and a half. I did get to see Chris on the way. And uh, so, yeah. that's cool. um, but uh, so stable diffusion is not um, not censored at all. Mm -hmm. I use that to make uh, a whole bunch of my offensive presentation material with uh, all sorts of nudity. Oh, so like there's not just tools like plugins which you know, think of a plugin like an app on your phone right all of a sudden once you install it it's like it's always been there you know what if my phone didn't have facebook on it at some point eh, that's weird um and actually i need to make sure it doesn't have it on there again i spent a lot of time on there um but there's also something called models so um you know, if you want to make a particular celebrity, uh, like a particular look, a particular anything, you can make a model. And people are just giving those out for free. There's a, there's a platform that I'm on all the time, Civitai, C-I-V-I-T-A-I. -I. Um, it's got an adult feature and this is like one of the few sites on the internet that I highly recommend you actually turn on the blur adult content if you're at work or anything because there is some interesting stuff on there people are very creative and you, know, you can upload whatever you want so but you can also download those things for free and use them and make your own thing i mean you know if you want to make weird tentacle Porn, go for it. Uh, now you can actually also animate with stable diffusion. There's a whole bunch of stuff about that. Uh, AI is now getting video. Um, and another one that, you know, it's really funny because it started this whole prompting thing is Dolly. Is uh, Dolly, uh, which is by OpenAI, the the people who make ChatGPT. Um, 
the first version was just research only. The second version, Dolly 2, there's a huge waiting list. I was on the waiting list before Mid Journey came out. Then Mid Journey came out. Then I finally got accepted onto the Dolly thing. And I was like, yeah, I don't even like this thing. Like they made it look so damn good and got everyone excited. But one of the things they did that that started this whole thing is they're the ones who gave the the language part of it to everyone else. Like, oh, yeah, well, just make this you know available, and then everyone figured out other ways to use that with GANs. Um, and uh, you had all these cool like disco diffusion and all these things, and eventually Mid Journey and all this stuff. It all started kind of with um, with Dolly, but Dolly is way more censorious than anything um especially their new version is pretty awesome you can access it for free at uh bing.com slash create microsoft uh you know gave uh open ai like 40 billion plus and so they get a to use all the fancy schmancy tools uh so that's how you can use it for free a certain number of credits for free every day uh a bunch of places will let you use stable diffusion for free by the way you get like 500 credits a day or whatever uh tensor.art is a really cool one that that's uh recent and um i like their interface i recommend that to my students it's uh it's not as powerful as like using the full-blown things but i'll get on to that later but dali um you can also use it for free like the really powerful version that uh, um is in uh inside of chat gpt4 and if you're not a paying subscriber to chat gpt i'm not sure what you're doing on this podcast you really should, it's like the greatest 20 dollars you can spend i'll happily sacrifice any amount of starbucks for the amount of power and time and experience that that application gives me but the cool thing about working with dolly a it was the first one to have text again not perfect but you know but they will get it on occasion, and if nothing else, it's a good starting point. B, pretty spectacular image quality. I, I think uh, Mid Journey's guy beats version six just came out, and it's pretty spectacular. And there's a bunch of models that I really love inside of Stable Diffusion that I'm much happier with than Dolly. But with with Dolly, the cool thing is that you converse with it so uh, you don't have to use a slash imagine there's no weird formatting there's nothing to dial in or anything you're just like hey um show me a painting of a cat on roller skates on a sunny day and i'll go okay cool and you're like "Ah." you know what uh and you can actually type the you know what if you want. It's not it's not the command. You, but if you type it, like I converse with this thing like a friend, and you know, like you know, what? right? That guy should have a sombrero. I'm like, okay, yeah, that sombrero should be pink. Now here's the thing: it shuffles things around, so you don't really have as much consistency as you do with the other ones, and you can't name. Uh, any celebrities you can't name any living artists so like i'm a huge fan of boris vallejo uh i've wanted to make art that you know he's he's been an inspiration of mine since like seventh grade uh, way before i even realized there was an artist and uh so if you type in uh yeah make that cat in a sombrero in the style of boris vallejo and it's gonna say oh whoa 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 no 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 can't do that but would you like me to do it in the style of a traditional fantasy art? Say, sure. And, you know, it might get you something kind of close. And you might be like, oh, an uh, example I showed in my class is um, uh, show me Alice Cooper holding up a cup of coffee that says delicious. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Dude, you just named the living person. Were you trying to get me sued? You might not say that in those words, but it says, I cannot use the, would you, but it knows who Alice Cooper is. So it's going to be like, would you like me to do a, 
a traditional rocker. And you get like the, so it looks like, you know, um, Alice Cooper's, you know, uh, stunt double or, you know, cousin or something. It, um, it won't do a black cocker spaniel. I just tried that. Yeah, it won't do it. <laughs> it, it aired out. I don't know if that's why. Uh, that poor species. Uh, it was know. cocker spaniel on all one word. Oh, no. Yeah, I used all one word, but when it came back, oh, it said word. it ran into issues doing Cocker Spaniel with two words. So I don't know. I'm going to try it again. <laughs> but, but yeah, um, so th they're all really good. Look, here, here's how I'll use a lot of stuff, um, regardless of which platform and all that. Because I, all right, look, here, wh where I really like Chat GPT, it, it doesn't matter if Dolly sucks. I mean, it's a great tool. <laughs> They're like, wait, hey, we just spent billions of dollars. What are you talking about? It's a, it kind of sucks. You're a pro. Like, eh. But what's amazing about it, you can use it as a starting point and you can converse about it. You'd be like, hey, uh, I'm going to these people's wedding and I want to bring them a really cool painting. And here's the things, here's who he is, and here's who she is, and here's what they like, and here's how they met, and blah, blah, blah. What image would be really cool? And then you can even say, give me the prompt for that. And, and then you can take that and put that in the mid-journey and, and stable diffusion and all that stuff. Ooh, one last thing that's super important, stable diffusion takes the cake. Um, so all of these people behind me are all very specific people um and you can't do that in any of the platforms except for uh stable diffusion because uh unless you're doing a celebrity and then you might not have their most recent look because they scrape the internet and yeah sure it will probably know who Dwayne the Rock Johnson is or who you know Barack Obama is or whatever but um hey dolly is gonna be like nope not touching that and uh but they're famous yeah there's tons of photos but if i say uh you know slash imagine helena lou uh riding a giant caterpillar through the sky it you know, might guess what Elena Lu might look like. It might look kind of similar because it's probably racist and there's stereotypes, you know, and a lot of people with the last name may have like long black hair or something like that. But it's not going to be you. And what I can do, I can take uh, the new version of Stable Diffusion SDXL is pretty darn smart. It, and so I can take between seven, 14 images of you. And then I can take, I can do what's called training a data set or fine tuning a model. And now I feed those into a process. And then, you know, a little bit later, I got a file. I put it on the server or my computer or whatever. And now I say, show me on the writing Caterpillar through the sky. And it will give me that uh, i can sit there and i can uh in paint uh mid journey says they've got in painting but right stable diffusion's got in painting uh you want to explain you want to yeah, explain what that is yeah yeah it's like inbreeding but better no i'm kidding uh it's uh so i can take a, a picture of um i don't know you know like here that the, the people right there or here, you know, I can I can take this and uh, the, the girl with the mushrooms coming out of her head and uh, I can uh, just mask out, like take the brush tool and go, oh, wow, it's cool. I'm, I'm doing it in real time, like it's digital. But, oh, uh, no, it's just, and, and then I can prompt again, and now it's only applying the prompt to this area. So if I've fine-tuned a model or trained as lingo goes in stable diffusion world and i've i've got that safe tensors file in the right directory now i can type in the prompt Lou, you know with mushrooms growing out of head and it will just do that and all of a sudden you've got you there 
and uh, I can change your hair color, I can prompt, I can change the expression just just by uh, prompting. And it's so super you just you just inpainted the area of her face and then reprompted, basically regenerated the face with a with a prompt, but yeah. using a trained model. Yep, yep, and uh, you know, that's, together essentially. And, and and that's kind of what I was what I was saying initially when I said you know that before I got into any of the apps I said look they're all great they're all super powerful but you know none of them are perfect and so a lot of times I'll take the stuff that Mid Journey gave me Mid Journey's got fantastic quality it's it's a very imaginative tool um, I, I I am a fan much of the time but I, I still take the output from that and dump it into stable diffusion and then fine tune it like in paint and just to to improve the things that i want because a lot of times it still doesn't quite get it right now i'm working on a, um, a character with four arms it's a tardigrade of uh, february 13th at night i guess it's february 14th in the morning uh, a bunch of my art is going to the moon like literally and uh so what was that what do you mean by that it's going to the moon yeah it's going on a spacex rocket i'm flying down to orlando and I'm watching the thing take off and it's got a bunch of my art and it's uh, there's this company called Intuitive Machines. They make little landers and, you know, it's going to the moon and, um, yeah, first gallery on the moon and all that crap. But it's so the. Luckily, it's not on a NASA vehicle. You know, I just had to make the art. Thankfully, if, <laughs> if, if I was. If in it was on a NASA wire, vehicle, it, it would explode. It might explode. There's still a chance it's going to explode. Uh, but regardless of whether the vehicle explodes or not, the substrate that we're etching the art onto is going to last. This guy that invented it, his name is Nova Spivak. And since you guys are smart people that are very business minded and marketing and stuff, you may have heard of Peter Drucker, the godfather of management and such so this is his grandson and he made this disc that's made out of quartz and nickel so it's basically indestructible so all the you know meteorites and you know moon's got no atmosphere so all the all the crap is gonna you know hit it it's not gonna destroy it so uh he actually he's got one of these discs in uh you know that Tesla that Elon's got oh, yeah. in the glove compartment is one of uh, Nova's discs. That's got a, a bunch of, um, I think it's got the foundation series by Asimov on there, you know, symbolic for them. Um, but the first one, he, he, he sent it to the moon uh, with the Israeli government. And so he's the first private citizen to send a thing to the moon. And, you know, but, um, Last minute, the thing crashed and, you know, kind of exploded. Didn't quite land on the moon. However, the disc did land and it's still there. It survived the explosion. Now, this brings us back full circle to the, you know, character with multiple arms that I'm working on. Uh, and uh, have you guys heard of tardigrades? Uh, they're known as water bears. No, uh, it's so not. Those there are the is. are those the ancient, the ancient things. No, no. I'm sure they're ancient. They've been around forever, but they're they're like all over. water fleas. <laughs> no, no, they're they're much cooler than that. So, uh, these are like these tiny eight legged critters. When I say tiny, like microscopic. They they live in uh, water bodies of water, uh, usually rivers, lakes, that kind of thing. They eat moss. They're pretty harmless and uh, all over the planet and um uh, people call them water bears because they kind of look like eight-legged adorable microscopic bears but here's the thing you know how uh space is uh harshest environment we kind of know you know sub freezing temperatures no oxygen cosmic radiation that gives you cancer and death instantly and well they took nasa 
the the ones that you said crash things and uh they um they they took these tardigrades up into space and, you know and didn't cost much in gas because they're microscopic so like very light and um kind of put them in space and these things didn't die when they're cool with like sub freezing non oxygen cosmic radiation they're like they hibernated. They're like, hmm, who wake me up when we're back on Earth? Uh, and they get back to Earth, and they're like, hmm, that was, that was nice. And that's just, you know, trying to study these things, like, how do you do that? Well, Nova pissed off a bunch of people, lost a lot of friends. Because when, when that aforementioned disc I was telling you about that did survive the lander crash, crash on the moon... It turned out he put a whole bunch of these microscopic critters on it, like literally on the surface. And now, you know, they these, these supposedly are just hibernating, or maybe they died by now, or old age, I don't know. But technically, he put an invasive species on the moon, so there kind of is life on in space, you know. However, And they're so, no longer microscopic. Uh, well, that's where the <laughs> art is. Um, we have the Tardigies. Uh, so we're creating a, um, a series, which hopefully will be Smurfs level popular, um, you know, about these starting with a graphic novel and animated and all this other stuff. But it's what, what happens when, you know, humans put a bunch of these indestructible things on the moon and then you know over billions of years and mankind moves to the moon and you know they've we kill ourselves with nuclear war or whatever but we leave our technology and nuclear waste and whatever and then these things evolve and billions of years later they got their own civilization and they love music and you know blah. so i'm trying to make these things and um man none of these platforms really understand when I say, oh, an adorable little creature with, you know, four arms or six arms or anything. So uh, here, here's some of the tips and tricks that you can use to make your own multi-armed creature. Uh, this is a very handy tip. Uh, is, uh, you know, think about what what is it that the AI would know? because Man, seems to know a lot. A I mean, spider. Really, you know, a what? Spider. Yeah, you could. You know, that's you could. You could probably get that. It. It. You're still can't spider. The the thing I was using was because uh, because I wanted it to be humanoid, you know, but cartoony and all that stuff. But multiple arms. Spiders don't have digits. They got these, you know, spear like appendages. Um, I think he did a really good job with, uh, with that in, uh, the 1990s version of Lost in Space. Very creepy spider. That's why they're always creepy. We're going for adorable. So, um, I used Shiva the Destroyer. I was going after the Indian gods, the, the Hindu gods. Oh, yeah. Multiple arms, and I was like, "Oh, show me an adorable version of you know Shiva Destroyer as a baby, but really fat, and you know that kind." Of, and I'm like, "All right, I I got some versions with stable diffusion and with Mid Journey, and actually with Dolly. Now they all have varying levels of uh, inspiration, uh, image image to image, so I can take a." A photo of Chris and I can or I can take a photo of kind of anyone you know and um oh the one I I did that you guys saw was uh so um uh, yeah none of us are famous enough and even Perry Belcher whose event we all met at, um not quite famous enough for mid-journey to know who he is and that kind of stuff and so I I fine-tuned a model so that I could make Gary Belcher and whatever. And then I, I took a, an image of Jean-Claude Van Damme, who's famous for his uh, splits and his kicks. And I said, all right, here's this. And show me Perry Belcher doing this. And it kind of emulated the image I saw. But with the model that I had tuned, 
And then I was like, now with a tutu and it put him in a tutu doing that split and that kind of stuff. So all these, all these tools are, they're all still very young. You know, we, we have a com we have this conversation this time next year. I literally cannot predict what's gonna, what we're going to see one year from now. Um, you know, people well, were, you're, you're having a hard time keeping up with your, with your course, right? Keep it's all changing so fast. So oh man, yeah. And when, when I'm on the road and all that kind of stuff, and I, I got like a couple of days of driving and, uh, apparently I need to upgrade my data plan so that I can have YouTube on the road. But then when you got all the scenery, like do you really want to have YouTube on the road. Like you want to enjoy this beautiful, you know, scenery all over. I got a ticket for doing 98 in a 75 in Wyoming a couple of days ago on driving home because I was enjoying the beautiful scenery, not the speedometer and the rental I got now until my car's engine is, uh, you know, restored at some point because that blew up a couple of weeks before. So, um, yeah, so don't enjoy the scenery too much, but, you know, don't watch YouTube all the time either. Yeah, but yeah, this stuff evolves so fast. It, it's I'm a huge fan of of uh, Peter Diamandis, um, the guy who started SpaceX and um, a bunch of other things. And you know, so he's talking about these are all exponential technologies. The your all this AI works and it works so well because now we have GPUs. It's not a bunch of CPUs, like your computer runs on a CPU, computer processing unit. GPUs are what NVIDIA makes, and there's other companies, but NVIDIA, it's like, what, the wealthiest company on the planet right now, uh, or if not, then maybe right behind Apple. It's one of the fastest accelerating stocks, um, but because every the whole world's AI is running, in fact, uh nvidia chips are one of the reasons that you know china's not like going after and just taking taiwan because you know taiwan's got like so much of this chip processing uh manufacturing there and so the, these gpus are faster they, they they got started for for video gamings and stuff uh you know and for for doing 3d for movies and stuff so if you have an nvidia card in your computer like uh you know, the, the current series is the RTX 4090 or, you know, whichever series you've got. What it does is it's a special processor. So your computer's running the operating system, the software and all that stuff. And then you got these these chips that are built on neural nets to, they run the AI. They handle the 3D. So I was doing 3D way before there was AI, right? The computer, you had to have a really fast processor, and then you got a really good graphics card, and all of a sudden, you can do a lot more, a lot faster. So that, that's what, uh, like, Amazon makes a killing off of their their server farms. But it's not just for hosting stuff. It's also they have, like, GPU farms. So you have what's called the render farms. So Hollywood used to have to buy, like, millions of dollars millions upon millions of dollars of, of computers that took a lot of electricity and a lot of space and all that stuff now you just be working off i mean you probably want decent computers but you know you, you send the, you finish the file you're like here's my animation you're working on like low resolution low quality and then you send it up into the cloud and you're like here just use as many computers as it takes i want this feature film being rendered in IMAX resolution and, uh, you know, it's 2000 frames and go. And then you keep working on whatever on your computer. Uh, otherwise, it would take up all of the processing power of your computer and so on and so forth. It's it's insane. So GPUs, and now they're getting even faster things than GPUs. And now Microsoft, Intel, HP, all the companies are like, they haven't quite cracked the code on how to make something as good as NVIDIA's. Uh, but I was talking about that these are exponential technologies. NVIDIA has all the amazing chips, and they're using those 
with their own AI. So the chips run the AI, and then they use the AI to engineer better chips and then better manufacturing. And manufacturing is only available and possible because these chips and it's just all these technologies are powering each other. And so they're all accelerating. Like, And so by next year, I, we're not far from going, hey, uh, you know, it's going to be checking your phone and, and detecting from your Fitbit what mood you're in. And, and then, you know, it's going to scour or scrape all your social media. So it's going to know your favorite actors and actresses and genres and going to go, oh, here, let me make you a, an action movie, you know, starring Scarlett Johansson and da 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 da. And you're like, oh, yeah, perfect. And it's just going to make it on the fly. Well, well, probably five years from that, but you know, we're this stuff is truly awe inspiring. Yeah. Hey, you were talking about doing the graphic novel stuff, and I know that like you have to have a way to keep your cons- your characters consistent. Um, you want to talk about how you would do that in Stable Diffusion um, if if someone's interested in creating a graphic novel, and yeah. also maybe talk about a little bit about um, running stable diffusion locally versus in the cloud and how you how you do both. Well, I mean, uh, do you go to GitHub and uh, it's a G-I-T hub um, and uh, just download, uh, I recommend automatic 1111, so four ones, that's uh, an open source uh, interface for stable diffusion uh it's gotten a lot easier to install and that's running it locally and that's great if you've got a decent gpu personally um i, I pay for cloud usage a, a really because i'm doing a lot of things more, like uh, this this robot here like uh there's this jeweler uh, he's a celebrity jeweler, and he does a lot of philanthropy, and he's created the the championship rings for the Drew League, which is uh, kind of like uh, not in the best of areas, and a lot of people who are in the NBA grew up there, uh, have come out of that. He's uh, it, it's given people a place to be instead of on the streets, and so it, it's got a lot of it's got a lot of love, and so he he made the championships ring the championship rings for that. And he said, um, I, "I I love working with this guy because he just he just loves my work. He does like he doesn't tell me what to do. He's just like, hey, I'm making these rings. You know, I want to make an NFT that goes with each of them. It's like, all right, cool, basketball. And I'm like, what are the ingredients? You know, what are you using? So he's got uh, gold, silver, uh, red rubies, uh, black diamonds, white diamonds. Right? I'm like, okay. And I made a series of these basketball playing futuristic robots. And I made. Here's what I love about AI. Like, let's let's take a step back. Right. One one of the things you mentioned, how, how can people use this professionally? How can people uh oh, it just hit me, graphic novel. You're the book guy. I see what you're doing. No, uh but <laughs> so so you're like, how, how can people use it professionally? How can people make careers out of it, make money and all that stuff? Look, he, here is so let's take a step back. Okay, cool. I'm I'm an artist, I'm a creative, I'm a problem solver. So how do I use it? Why why do I like AI? What is AI to me other than, you know, to be able to make funny jokes like, oh yeah, my computer knows what ketamine is. Um it it's it's iteration. So Helena, let, let's say you you want to commission me for a painting and you're like, hey, uh my friend's getting married and da 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 and you've got a month and I want like this giant painting and I, I like I want to steal the show. No problem. Okay. Um well I ask a bunch of questions, yeah, I get some reference photos from you, and then I'll work on some sketches. Let's say that takes me a couple of days. I'm like, all right, here's these three. And you're like, mm, I don't know. I mean, these are cool, but can you show me a little more. I'm like, all right, well, you know, tick, 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 tock. You know, wedding's coming up, all right? I'll make a couple of 
you know, more sketches and stuff. You're like, ooh, these two are kind of cool. I'll go, all right, well, let me let me refine them a little more. And you're like, all right, we'll go with this one. And then I spend the rest of the time working on it. And I'm sending you progress shots along the, the way. And you're like, ooh, you know, it's something's off here. Let's change this. And I'm like, okay. And and then I give you the thing and it's perfect. And the, the bride and groom cry and everyone else who bought anything else feel like losers because, you know, everyone's just going to be talking about this amazing painting I made and that you got them. However, AI is iteration. Now, what you ended up getting in that story was three to five sketches because that's how much time I had. And then you got the best painting that I was able to make with the revisions within the time allotted. Now, with AI, I can work on, you You were mentioning the cloud, Chris, with with the robots I was just mentioning, that the first night I made oh, 3,768 images in one night because I was working across five different cloud computers for I don't know, 59 cents an hour or something, all of them running stable diffusion. I'll be like, oh, let me work on a prompt. Ooh, this looks good. Cool. Computer A, you go, go just, oh, we lost our hostess or she turned her camera off. My- I think she had to take a break. My my jokes have that effect, but yeah. So I, <laughs> You're really I, good. I, I used I used like five five computers at once. Not a single one of them was the the computer. I'm on an eight thousand dollar computer here right now, and I use it to watch Netflix. You know, <laughs> like because I'm it's it's the look these GPUs are great. And they're fast, and the, they keep accelerating and improving, just like the software and the technology. And they're expensive. You want the good one, like the RTX 3090 or 4090, sorry, 3090. Well, last year's model, the, the 4090 um, is going to cost you, you know, about $1,800 or so. That's a bunch of money. I would rather take that $1,800 and spend it, you know, 29 to 56 cents uh, an, an hour at a time multiples of time and just be using that to earn money that I can use to buy a GPU if I want, which I don't because here's the cool thing. The $8,000 computer I was talking about is a big freaking tower. It's got water cooling. It's heavy. Um, you know, use up a lot of electricity. Guess what? I can be running stable diffusion on a freaking iPad or, you know, a laptop or something and the toilet at Starbucks because it's running in the cloud. I can be switching between all these different ones. I'm probably not going to spend the time at the toilet in Starbucks, you know, but I'm just using it as an example. Like you really don't need that much computing power now. You're running it in the cloud and that's the beauty of it. So I have computer A, go work on you know, I'm, I'm working on it. I figure out a prompt. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Okay, boom. You go you know, go make me a couple thousand of those. I'll let you know when to stop. And then I'm working on trying more things. And I'm like, all right, computer B, I like this. Oh, let's try those prompts that work, but with a different model. Computer C and D, you guys work that. Now I'm computer E working on like trying more models and more prompts while all these four computers are doing the thing. At the end of the night, when I'm finally exhausted and, uh, you know, it's like five in the morning, I'm like, all right, let me shut these down because you will get bills if you don't shut them down. And then there goes your balance. But I download the images, get up the next day, and then it's got to spend a while going through you know, 3,768 images. And I choose the best ones. And then I crossbreed those. And then I run those through again. And now I've got like the 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 keepers and i was like within a day day and a half so now when i'm sending just the concepts there's not here's the three concept sketches that i made it's like what i'm showing you is the best not the best i had time for but the best that you know out of like thousands of iterations and if uh another fantastic use of it that absolute life changer game changer for me is the fact that i can take you know the the photos of of people and i i can fine tune the model and now i can make 
the photo references. So that dude and that dude, that's uh, both my, my older brother. Um, we kind of had a falling out and I was kind of working on it. And I was like, oh, I know. So I reached out to his husband and I said, hey, you know, what's something that I didn't even mention that was art. I was just asking, like, what's something that he's is he's never done because you know he's a pretty accomplished fella and i said you know like maybe maybe buying something a particular car or a house and like i don't know going somewhere although you guys have like freaking been everywhere his husband works at a adventure travel company so you know there's that and i said is it you know i don't know getting uh, accomplishing something like oh chris you like this getting a pilot's license or something and um you know he said oh maybe you know getting to chat with like you know with his uh sci-fi writing heroes we grew up on sci-fi you know i said great do you happen to have a sequentially numbered list of his favorite ones and like oh, you know talk to your little brother they geek out about it all the time and i reach out to my little brother and he tells me it's uh, uh what uh robert jordan uh, who wrote the Wheel of Time series and Isaac Asimov and David Eddings. And um, so he said, Robert Jordan's the, the, the top guy, though, like loves the Wheel of Time series. And um, there's not a lot of pictures of this guy on the freaking Internet. Like I spent a lot of time looking and all the pictures are low quality and they suck. So using a couple of images and a little bit of dedication and grit i finally trained the model i could get a lot of web traffic if i put there you know this dude's got like millions of fans like amazon just did a really high quality version like his fans are like the you know lord of the ring fans so like if you screw up that show and it's not like right according to the thing they'll you know burn down your production company so He's got a lot of fans. And so I was able to make pictures of my brother having, there's a lot of in painting involved in both of these, you know, but having lunch with his sci fi writing heroes. It turns out that his sci fi writing heroes are dead, by the way. So it's not like I could actually, you know, he can't, you know, like go and have lunch with them. But I was able to make that happen, doing the impossible. And, you know, I figured since he loves sci fi and he's going to meet with Asimov, why not do it like Asimov style and all that kind of stuff? And you can do that because you can train the models. But it, my, the bane of my existence as an artist is people giving me crappy reference material and not enough reference material because we know our faces oh so well because we look at them in the mirror all the time and we know the faces of our loved ones oh so well because we see them so much so someone may not be able to tell you why that painting doesn't look like their husband or wife or themselves they're like I don't know, man. It it looks like them, but it's not them. Something's off. Now, it might be like a quarter millimeter off in the distance between the pupils or, you know, just something. We don't know We because we don't look at them as much as they've looked at themselves in a lifetime. And But the AI, man, it, doesn't, it gets it right away. You feed them like 20 pictures, boom. Now, you're not limited to the – as – as an artist, you know, like I was always trying to get the their expressions and I was limited by the images that they gave me. And if they didn't, I might guess on what their smile would look like if they ever smiled in the picture. But, you know, then people are like, no, nah, that doesn't quite look right. Do like, you have a picture of them smiling? And I try to just it. No, with AI, you're just like, all right, here's like 20 pictures. Give me a model. Boom. Now I can say, well, i you know, smiling or, you know, really smiling. No, bigger. No, you should that. I want her crying with tears. No, I never want to see you crying. And, uh, but unless it's tears of joy, I got one. That's my unofficial slogan. I make grown ups cry. And you guys have seen me make Perry Belcher cry on stage in front of 400 people with art that I made and, uh, you know, these, these tools. And so you can create solid 
reference materials. And, and now I'm not even like, I don't have to sit there and praise and hope that I get their expressions. Right. And now people keep saying to me, Oh my God, you're like me. Oh my God. You got the expression. Perfect. And I'm like, Oh, thanks. Now I still spend just as long on the art, but now I'm, I'm just more efficient. I'm not, you know, power steering and power brakes are the same way. You know, you get a lot more efficiency, but you're still, you know, achieving this, the same goal, right? Just with much less effort and you can focus on other things. Um, so, um, yeah. All right. Next question. To, to get those expressions, do you need a reference image or do you just do that through prompting? Yes both um so okay the question you had asked earlier before i went off on a giant tangent on what does actual ai mean to me and what's the benefit of its iteration and now we all know that so we can move on and back to your answer about uh or your question about uh graphic novels and character consistency and all that stuff let's take another step back i'm really good at not answering the questions i'm asked you know i can um dating me must be very frustrating but so um, one of the things I would tell you if you're doing a graphic novel, one of the hardest things about a graphic novel is not just making the art, but actually figuring out the cinematics of it, the composition. What should I put in each frame? So this is where chat GPT is fantastic for. It'd be like, hey, I've got, here's the story. You know, you obviously have to go and use Chris's tools to come up with a good story, but you know, uh, so once you have your 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 plot, your storyline, and all that kind of stuff, you just feed the whole thing in ChatGPT, which now I think what has two hundred k tokens or something. It is made even longer, but you're like, look, all right, I got the graphic novel. Uh, I I want to do you know, 47 frames, panels, whatever you want to call them. And so describe to me what to put in each of these panels. So it knows your story and it's going to help you figure out what goes in each thing. Because yeah, sure, you know your story, but how do you, how do you show it? You know, like, how do you, how do you do the cinematography? When you watch a movie, I mean, that's like, massive teams of people that you know, even your low budget indie flicks only have a couple of people it's still like teams of people trying to figure out or we're going to show the camera it needs to show this scene you got to show the outside the building exterior and the weather should be this oh and then you see the spaceship person distance and then you see a close-up of the person looking up but you don't know what they're looking at yet and then you see them in shock and then you know, you see, uh, whatever. So you got to figure that out. You have to translate the story in the visuals. And chat GPT can do that for you. And be like, oh, will it, do the, will it do the panel layouts too? I wouldn't rely on it for that. But you can try by next time. And, you know, this year, I, I, <laughs> it's probably going to tell you. Uh, I can't show you that city. I can't show you that building. I can't show you that outfit, brand name, boom. You know, like it's all, it's all trademarks and copyright. I'm sorry, but, but I can tell you what you should have in each thing, which is savings of thousands of hours and depending on the length of the thing, but, but, but it's, it's savings of a lot of time and, and more than time. It's, 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 it's the brain. The brain power, and again, it's chat GPT. So you're 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 working with it conversationally. You're like, oh man, I, I really like that, but I don't think in panel four it would actually show that. I, I I think we should show you know a silhouette first, so that people are still in surprise. And we're like, oh, you're right. Let's da 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 da, and you know, it will spit out all the frames again. And so you can sit there and try and prompt those things um, with. So yes, if you're Midjourney just released a new tool a couple of versions ago. I, I forgot the name. I think it might be fine tuning or something, but you can actually give it a prompt, even with uh, some image references. I want, and, and you're defining a style, and it's going to show you, it's going to, you remember the Pepsi case test, you know, Coke, Pepsi, uh, you know, you're like, oh, A or B, and you're like, A. 
And then be, well, what about this? A, B, boom. You know, and you just keep going through that and you define either 12, 16, or, you know, how many ever um, you choose. To, and now you get to give a name. And now there's a command with a really weird number that you're calling that particular style. So now you can actually define your very own style. It's pretty cool and powerful. Um, I really like stable diffusion. I'm, you know, biased, but I, I use all of them, but I find stable diffusion to be the most consistent because you can, if you go on Civitai, there's, you know, where, where, uh, what's it called? Uh, Dolly is going to be like, Oh, sorry. Can't, can't show you that. Uh, go on Civitai, someone already made a Frank Frazetta, you know, or a Ken Kelly. These are like some amazing legends in the, in the illustration and the, the fantasy art genre. And there's a bunch of them. Um, the Last of Us is, is a graphic novel that, you know, got made into the show. Like, so there's, there's, there's all these different, um, uh, styles that people have already made now these a lot of these are done in lauras which are small models so it's um you're using an existing model that does this beautiful you know you like how it outputs everything but now you're stacking this little command on it which now says and now giving it a consistent style now additionally you can also um use uh, uh seed number now mid journey dolly and stable diffusion all have seed numbers uh the way any of these make their images it starts with you, you ever uh you know we don't we don't have those old glass TVs where you know if you don't have a signal you see like you know, it was called snow noise, you know, just little dots, gray and white dots or whatever. So I don't think Helena knows what you're talking about. <laughs> Back in my day, we had to walk uphill both ways through snow just to turn the dial in order to change the channel on the TV. No. Uh, so on all these, so basically you got these little dot patterns that just starts off in and the way you ever look at a cloud and go, hey, that one kind of looks like a cloud or oh, that one looks like a dragon. or right? And so that's kind of what it does. You're telling it the prompt. It's starting with a completely random set of little, little white dots that you you can't see, but it keeps refining in every there, – so there's, there's two the, – the way that these, uh, these started was with uh, – Again, I forgot what uh, something. Is, is two networks. It was basically this. This is what I was talking about. Where where Dolly released it. It was is you got a language model, like you know, it's looking at the words that you write, and that becomes like your pilot, and the uh, the ship or plane and the vehicle is the image generator. So the image generator starts generating based on what the language thing does and it evaluates well does this actually look like the thing you asked for and it then keeps modifying it and dialing in until it gets ta-da here's your thing and it still butchers it half the time but it's not the point you still get this beautiful thing and so the seed number is the exact dot pattern that you started with and why that's important is because you can run the same prompt a million times and you'll get a million different results. That's really actually multiple million results because mid journey gives you, uh, you know, four images at a time and then you have to upscale the one you want. Um, that's another reason I, I like stable diffusion the best. I can just go here, make me 400 images and I'll keep working on this thing or say make more, you know, but, um, and, um, it's it just easier, like you have your seed number right there. And so you can have it be a random seed number, meaning like give me a different one every single time, or you can give it the same seed number. And that means that 
if I create an image that I am just absolutely in love with and I want to just make some modifications to it. Let's say I got, uh, you know, Captain America and I just, I love how it got the, the leather and rubber and whatever the heck his, you know, suit is made out of. And, and now I want to put, you know, you as Captain America. Oh, right, totally. Actually, you got, you got the hair and you, you'd, you'd be able to pull that off, Chris. And, um, so I'm gonna put you in there, but but I want I want to recreate the exact, you know, one the 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 look that I that I got. Well, I'd be able to do that by using the same seed, even though I'm changing the prompt out and I'm adding your fine tuned model to that. And so by using a specific model, because Laura's, as I, I mentioned before, and Laura's aren't the the only way of doing a a fine tune. It's it's a concentrated thing. It's like you're just teaching it the one thing. You're saying like, here, this is a Christopher Landon. And now it knows that because before it would only guess what it might look like. And so if you're doing it in, in mid-journey and Dolly, you actually have to try and describe, you know, uh, a man that looks like this, da 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 you know, and you get close. Right, uh, but it's not going to be exactly you. I can take a bunch of pictures of you and make it you. So, but then I can also take a bunch of. I can take a thousand. It's kind of wasteful at this point, but like you know, I, I can I take I can take fifty, a hundred pictures, like frames out of a out of an existing comic book that I love, and I can say this comic book style. Right, so it's not trying to get a particular face and say, "Oh, this is an Ori Bengal, this is a Helena Lu, this is a Christopher Landon." No, now it's this is you know Ken Ken Kelly style, this is Frank Rosetta style, this is Boris Vallejo style, this is you know uh, Pablo Picasso style, and like yeah, it's gonna know what Pablo Picasso style is because everybody knows Pablo Picasso and there's so much of the stuff on the internet, but you can take like your favorite images and take really good high quality ones. And maybe of just one particular one of Picasso's styles and you can do that. Now here's the other cool thing. <laughs> I, I mentioned um, Pablo Picasso. I mentioned Ken Kelly. I mentioned, uh, I mentioned a bunch of artists, but I can actually mix them. So I can take uh, Clint. He's, uh, he's the guy, Clint, whatever. He's the guy who did all the little gold droplets and stuff and everything. And I can take Norman Rockwell, who did all the, like, you know, we've, we've all seen his illustrations, whether you know him or not. They're all, like, very Americana, you know, the kids waiting at the doctor's office, you know, like the uh, old ladies walking in their swimsuit with the to, to get the mail. Like, he's got all this, like, just a fantastic illustrator. He did a ton of stuff for like the New Yorker and a lot of stuff. Look him up, right? But so you can take all your favorite artists and there's a bunch of artists databases now that you can look up, you know, artists in mid journey and artists. There are lots, it's like thousands of people in all of them. Unless of course you're on Dolly, then it's like, I can't do that. Uh, but uh, you know, it will, it will try to, you, you can ask Dolly, if I wanted a style that's similar to, you know, like you just really got to walk on eggshells. But your thing was about consistency in graphic novels. So if there's, you know, let's say I, I liked, uh, who's, uh, who's, who's an, a graphic novel illustrator that, uh, uh, Talbot, uh, the, the guys who did the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? Uh, Eastman and Talbot, I think, uh, you know, hopefully... Uh, I don't get a bunch of uh, angry listeners saying, oh, you got it wrong. But I knew this like in seventh grade, which a while ago. And uh, so so let's say Eastman and Talba, you know, I can take their style. And I can take, you know, Ken Kelly and Clint because I want you know, gold droplets. So I say, show me Christopher Lannon as Captain America. Or an illustration of the, you know, as Captain America, uh, I'm gonna say swinging on a vine, but that's Tarzan, you know, like I'm the one I, I pull Tarzan off, I got that, I, that's on my business card and everything. Uh, but you know, um, 
and show me uh, in the style of, you know, da 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 da, and and so in the style of Frank Frazetta, and Norman Rockwell, and isn't it? And if you keep that formula somewhere, so you can make a, you can actually make a, a style, which basically you're embedding a bunch of these prompts. So it's a nested command. You're saying like, look, I want like a macro, right? You, uh, every time I type this, it means these things, right? So it's saving you a bunch of tokens and saving you time. And so you can do that. So now you've got the consistent styles, both you've got the character defined. You can also define the environments. You can also define your own style. As, as an artist, I can gain a picture of you know like 50 of my own artworks and say make Ori Bengal style right and I now have it create artworks in my style and uh then stable diffusion also has this incredible stuff called control net which again I'll talk about earlier because it's open source you got all these uh developers that make this stuff and, and I hope this doesn't sound like it's confounding, like, oh my God, where do I start? Or he's mentioning all these things. So far, I've said, look, just you got a command, go to these places that have all these free styles and try a couple of them. And you can fine tune a model by throwing 20 people, 20 pictures. So now I got you, I got the styles I like. I had chat GPT write, you know, help me with my plot and uh, help me figure out what goes in each thing. Now, control net, control net is a confusing one uh, because it's got its own models, and but they do different things. So control net really lets you, I, I was using it last night um, and uh, I got, I got a painting of uh, my collector is is sitting there. Uh, wanted very specific clothing, and he's looking and pointing to the right. And his dog is standing next to him, and they're watching a nuclear explosion. And there's two dollar bills all over, and his favorite molecules, and also. And so, I didn't quite get the face right, but I I had the expression already in the composition. So I took that. I, I took like a screen grab of that. I put that in as, um, you know, in a control net. And I said, keep trying. And he made like a hundred versions of his face. You know, I tried different prompts, different materials, different this and that. But each one, he's facing the right way. The sunglasses are in the right place because control net is, it's not just an image to image. It's, you can give it, you have different control nets for different things. So when I showed Perry doing the Van Dam splits, I used an open pose control net. So that means you can, you know, go onto uh, Pinterest. That's a fantastic reference library. Just type in what you're looking for, right? With these robots, there you go, perfect. I used uh, I used an open pose control net. I, I went on Pinterest. I, Typed in slam dunk, right? Or NBA slam dunk, uh, slam dunk action shot, slam dunk action photography. And I'm like, okay, this, 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 this. And I'm like, ooh, I like this. I drop that in with one model that I uh, seems to be doing good futuristic robots. I'm like, make the robot slam dunking like this guy, basically. And it, and it does that, right? So there's a... You're not limited. It, some people don't understand what's being told of them, and some people aren't great at saying what they're thinking, right? So when you're trying to prompt a particular scene, you're like, oh, I want the guy jumping in from the left, and there's he's jumping through the broken glass, you know, like he jumped through and he broke the window, and I want some rays of light and dust. And other people are startled and they're wearing, you know, green and 
that's a lot of stuff. And hey, you know what? Grammar matters, you know. So when you're typing all this stuff and you, you may just be confusing the AI. Mid-journey, as smart as it is, Dolly is as smart as it is, and so on. There, You may get one or two of the things that you tried, maybe six or seven, but, you know, like a whole complex scene. When you're describing a thing, right, you have a very specific environment, right? This is, you know, this is at the cabin. This is at this particular school, right? So what you can do, again, all depends on how fancy you want to get. You, you can just prompt the heck out of everything and boom, be done with it. And you might succeed at what you want. But if you're looking to do what I'm looking to do, like a serial graphic novel that's going to go on for many issues and, you know, maybe get a Netflix deal or something because people want to see me in a movie, like, you, you're building very specific environments and stuff, right? If you, if you look at, um, pick a movie right how to train your dragon um uh, uh blade runner 2049 uh, they all have what's called an art book uh like they you, you can it, it shows you know, star wars disney anything with picture and it shows you like the the concept sketches that they made you know like the animatics the storyboards so here's what Here's what Woody the Cowboy should look like or could look like. And they go through different versions. And here's what Buzz Lightyear is going to look like. And here's what Andy's bedroom looks like. And here's what the arcade looks like with the, the claw, the thing. And here's those screens. Right? So it's like here, it's, it, it's very, very, very specific everything. This is what that, um, this is what this spaceship should look like, right? The Millennium Falcon looks like this. The X-Wings look like this. The TIE Fighters look like that. The ADATs or whatever. I, uh, and, and, and so they've, they do call it a Bible, actually. You know, if you, if you look at a movie like Avatar uh, or all the Star Wars stuff, they have like a lot of stuff in there, right? And so you've got to be pretty damn consistent and you're not going to get that just by prompting everything and it's also going to be highly ineffective so as you come up with your with your story and you figure out what's going to go in each thing and now you know where it's at you can actually train what i would recommend what, what i'm doing right now with the with the tardigies because they got multiple arms as we've pointed out and all that stuff like they I'm I'm making the little fella in in 3D. Uh, I I sent you a very creepy image, Chris, right before this call of a uh, a fat naked man with uh, four arms. It was kind of like I, I started with a th one 3D mesh and then I uh, oh nice uh, <laughs> roll over. <laughs> so, um, and uh, but but you know so I'm, I'm starting in 3D and then I start with one mesh and then mesh is what you call the the 3D object and you don't have to have a 3D background and all that stuff. You can work with someone on, on Fiverr or if you don't want any friends or you can just make concept sketches or um, there, there's, there actually is a control net uh, model that's called sketch or I think it's good. You can literally draw a stick figure and give it a prompt. And it's going to try to, it's going to look at it knowing that it's a crappy, he, everyone was going, oh, no, no, I'm not an artist. I can't even draw a stick figure. Yeah, you can draw a stick figure well enough for controlling that stick figure. I mean, it's not a stick figure. Uh, doodle or sketch to, to figure out alongside with the prompt, right? You just, it's a compressed, the stick figure is just, you know, uh, it, it it's a compressed version of what you're trying to tell it you're like here you know like it's superman's like does his thing and you know you just draw a little stick figure doing this and and then you prompt superman flying through over a building it's going to match the angle and the thing and the perspective that and it, you're like why this came out of that and so there, there's so many tools that that you can use with this and um so having 
Um, I recommend 3D and stuff like that for building your set. That way you can have very specific angles, right? You can actually be doing cinematography for, for me, this is important, right? So like, here's the front of the building, here's the side of it. And you know what, you, you don't have to, um, if, if it's not an existing, um, you know, building, if, if you're creating your own world, right, your own city, your own building, whatever, opt it in mid-journey, but describe what you want this building to look like, and then have a picture of the front of it, have a picture of the side of it, have, you know, describe the different rooms, or, you know, go nag some interior design photos from Pinterest and, and use those as you know, uh, control nets or image image and put them into that graphic style. And now you can use those as backgrounds, uh, you know, traditional cell animation, all your original Disney movies before, uh, not just Disney, you know, Akira, all that. Like the traditional animation is you, you, you got the background and then you have a, a cell, you have a, a transparent sheet of uh, mylar, I think, and you, the artist would paint on that, and then they photograph it together. That's also how they did, like, the, you know, green screen originally, right? You got your background, the big boulder rolling, and then you film Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford running in front of it. You key out the thing, and then they would film. Back in the day, they would have to rotoscope it. You used to have to cut out. The background so now you, you can do that in photoshop very easily now uh photoshop by the way has its own generative ai and all that stuff but if you want consistency and you're doing like a full-on thing i would recommend you know yeah go ahead and have someone build it or you build it and it doesn't the cool thing is it doesn't have to be fancy you don't need you don't need like hollywood level here's here's all the textures and details and the the doors and stuff you could use like there's a free app blender blender.org not only is the app free it's super powerful people are making movies commercials music videos with it left and right it's got a 2d animation thing it's got video compositing it's 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 free and tons and tons and tons and tons of uh tutorials like it's got a huge community because it is open source. Um, so that's Blender, uh, SketchUp. Uh, that's one that got bought up by Google. That's a free architectural thing. So, you know, you don't... I, is, I showed you guys at that at a, at that first uh, AI bot summit, right? I just took a couple of cubes that I made in, in Blender, like literally two cubes, and I said... Uh, a, a house by Franklin Lloyd Wright, uh, in in you know, in front of a pool, and it, it took those cubes, and it turned them into something spectacular, and you can do that, but so just you can just have the basic, the basic shapes. So you're just taking like spheres, cylinders. These things literally are called primitives in 3D. So you're taking the primitives and you're just laying them out, doing a little camera work, and then you're taking the still frames and you're telling it with the style you want, with the prompts you want. And after a while, you have a so, library of things. So, so you basically build the scene uh, in 3D with Blender, get your camera angles, and then get get the still shots, load them into Stable Diffusion with uh, Control Net. Uh, oh, and, uh, you can also photo bash, right? You can add things to the scene. Photo bash. Um, I got it. Everything. And yeah. You know, and then once you have the scene, you render it with a prompt, basically. Cool. So you can, you, you can batch process in stable diffusion. I, I think at this point we're probably getting a little advanced for some of the, the people, but, but you, you can take animation now, right? So I can take, uh, let's just, let's just stick with what I was saying before, like a, a cube or here, here's a Bluetooth speaker, right? I can literally 
do like top motion photography, right? Like I just take a picture. I can put my 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 phone on a five dollar tripod stand, whatever you call it, from Amazon. Take a picture, put this thing in front of it on the table, and go. And then I can put this uh, alcohol. Uh, not drinking alcohol, it's isopropyl alcohol for the circuitry of my computer, but you know, if you want to drink it, I do not recommend it. It's uh but I can put this behind it and now I can take a picture and I can move this and I can move this and move this and move this, boom. And now I can run that thing, uh that sequence of you know, five, six images, and I can say uh that that is a uh you know tesla cyber truck if i trained it on that i don't know that it's got enough images in the you know uh but there's plenty of images of it on the net so i take you know between 7 and 20 of them and i train it and now i got my tesla cyber truck in front of uh spacex rockets and i guess i got tesla and spacex on the brain for some reason mm -hmm. Nothing to do with uh, going to Orlando to watch my heart go to the moon in a couple of weeks, but uh, you know, and do the thing. I can, I can even like literally, like have this thing, you know, moving up and just Photoshop my hands out, and then so now you've got a consistent image, and because you you can do batch processing, it's got a batch thing. So you put the same prompt, like you got the one prompt, but you're saying grab, do that. To every image in this directory, or you can take an actual video of, uh, you know, um, apparently the standard test for this, you know, in programming, it's making it say hello world in, um, in stable diffusion uh, animation. It's taking uh, girls dancing on TikTok and, you know, turning them into anime girls or something. It's, there's a lot of that going on there. But people have made spectacular music videos by doing that. So you, there's a lot of free tools now that will take your video, whatever it be, export it into a still frame sequence, and now Stable Diffusion can just, you know, with control net, whatever, just image to image without control net, just... You can prompt the heck out of it and, or give it a single prompt, give it the seed, and boom. And now you've got like pretty consistent uh, stuff. I'm, I'm trying to think of a, a couple of more resources for all y'all. I mean, most, most things you'll be able to just, yeah, images.google.com, right, which will take all the stuff from all the stock photo libraries, I stock photo and all these things. And you can take the stock photos, even if they got their little watermarks on them and they're not like high res and all that stuff. And you can still use it as a reference image, whether image to image, whether control net, doesn't matter because it's just using it as a reference. It's looking at it, going, hmm, okay, there's the building, there's the person, they look happy, there's da 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 da. Like, AI just kind of looks at stuff and tries to understand it. It tries to get the essence of what it's seeing. It's also trying to get the essence of what you're communicating. You, you get a better chance of getting it right, exactly what you want, by having reference photos or photo bash or whatever. Um, and so most of the things, yeah, images.google, uh, Pinterest. These resources alone are just invaluable. If you want to go get fancy schmancy, do stuff in 3D. Hey, you know what? 3D is tough to make everything. Modeling, as it's known, is uh, it's kind of a it's a pain in the ass. Like it takes a while to learn. And, yeah, it's probably faster to just pay someone on Fiverr do it, but you don't need to do that. There's a bunch of stuff for free too. So cgtrader.com, turbosquid.com. These are uh, two 3D model libraries. So if you wanted, uh, if you're making a music video, a commercial, a film, and you wanted a spaceship, you wanted a, you know, I don't know, a, I'm not great with, oh, wait, uh, Chris, you're you're great with uh, with planes. You want a very specific planes. Go 
go to what was that the the Corsair the F yeah the F for you yeah uh, go go look that up on uh, on TurboSquid.com and you'll get versions all the way from like I don't know three and four dollars and that kind of stuff for like low polygon stuff that you can it's good enough for you know working in most of this stuff all the way to like a couple hundred dollars for something that's like Hollywood quality. Like if you, you want to, again, like have it in a feature film and actually animate it and do all this stuff. You can do that. But so 3d is evolving in a massive way because of AI. Now those two are being integrated. You don't, you no longer have to get like all your lighting and materials and camera work. Perfect. You can just, you yeah, know, get, like I said, the blocky versions and just set up the composition the way that you want it to and prompt the rest of it. And it's going to look at the shapes and go, oh, well, this is supposed to be the 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 Corsair and this is supposed to be the, you know, the battleship that's trying to shoot at it. And these are the clouds and, and you get the exact composition you want and you get these spectacular images. And then you can in paint to fix what it didn't get right and all that stuff. And um, it's, it's a spectacular combination. So uh, you probably don't need to spend the $300 to get the perfect like uh, airplane or Ferrari or whatever model because you can use the $4 one and it just looks pretty darn close to what it is and, you know, just pose it. Rotating things and placing them. That's easy. You can do that. Saving a keyframe, that means like at at frame one, I want it to be here. At frame five, I want it to be here. And then you move the thing and it automatically is gonna go is gonna move from between frame one Queen and it. Yeah, you know twins. Yeah. How yeah. oh, you guys look identical? Um, twins? Yeah. Um so have you have you played with, you mentioned video, have you played with any of the ones that do the real-time transformations? So like, like Kriya, I think was one that I saw. Kriya is great. Uh, Leonardo now has it. So those are based off of um, Stable Diffusion. And uh, it's a new thing that came out, hard to keep track anymore and say like three months ago two and a half months ago which is called lcm models they're basically like it, it's it's a lower quality version but you can do it in real time i mean it's it's it's, it's mind-blowing it's generating the images before you finish typing the thing but you can also draw it's what i was showing on my on my last uh i haven't had too much time to play with it so what I was showing in, in the last uh, in the last training I did, um, you can actually do, there, there's a lot of uses for it. For most people, I don't think it's necessarily practical just yet, other than the fact that it's fast, you know, and so you can start typing N orange and you'll see an orange and then cat and all of a sudden the orange becomes a cat and, you know, like, sitting can I say, on a it, like as you type each word it's already adjusting the image which which is spectacular going back to what i was saying earlier that anything that you can imagine pretty soon these you know a year from now who yeah. knows where these things are going to be um rather than those tools which are the real time which i i don't know well, yeah, mess with it, play with it. See, it's it's cool, it's fun, uh, for sure. But I think that uh, your your viewers may enjoy tools like Runway ML. Um, they not only have their own stable diffusion based tools and a bunch of tools that you can use to speed up your uh, AI based tools. That's prompt to video. Uh, that, to video. Runway ML is definitely known for their uh, image to video, prompt to video, and video to video. So you're giving an input. You just prompt something and say, you know, show me a, you know, pony on roller skates on ice. You're going to do that. 
But if you, the other thing you can do, and you, and you can do a bunch of stuff, but you can take an Im image that you made in mid journey and you can just put it in there without even giving it a prompt. And it will generate like a four second uh, clip of that thing moving. And now they've got a thing where you can just brush off, not like leave me alone, but like brush, like mask. Uh, the oh, motion brush. The motion. And so, you know, you've got this view of, and you just want the clouds moving, not the trees, not the person, or you want just the person turning or whatever. And you can use images along with the prompt. And like I said, you know, you're, you're now taking the images wherever they came from. You can take a drawing you did with your traditional media and put it on it. Now, they're not always that consistent, right? Um, but Stable Diffusion has Animate Diff and Travel Diffusion and all these things that are, I'm not deep diving into them because, you know, there's like, I, I don't want to, people are like, where do I even start? There's so much stuff. But if, if you're looking to make like an animation, music, I, I'm, I'm, I got a client I need to make two or three music videos for right now. I haven't done it. But I, I know exactly how I'm going to do it. And I'm not intimidated by the project at all. I told them I'll have them by March. Like, that's, you know, pretty uh, ballsy. I'm like, yeah, no no problem. Like, yeah. And that includes, you know, like packing everything up and moving between now and then as well. So because I've, I don't have to have an army of computers, right? And do it all in the cloud. So I can have a bunch of things happening at once uh, for all the, all the processing, all the, you know, like I can work on a bunch of frames at once. I can do, uh, 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 there's, I'll give you guys a couple more tools um, on, on 3D, but uh, these tools are designed to be simple. So, right, I was talking about Pinterest. I was talking about, um, in Google Images, which you know ties in all the all the, the stock photo libraries and all that stuff, and that's that's great. But what if you want very specific poses, very specific looking people? Well, you've got Daz D A Z three D dot com. This is a free software that. It's spectacular. There used to be actually still around uh, a software called Poser, and um, uh, pay attention, Chris, because this goes with the graphic novel thing. Um, so Daz has so do I have one around here. I actually have around here somewhere, but well, the packing. So who knows where anything is? Um, but I have a um, a, a wooden Poser. It doesn't mean like someone who can't skateboard. It means like those little wooden dolls that are on a stand and you, you know, put the pose and it's it's an artist's reference tool. So you, you know, you you set the character doing their Captain, uh, you know, their Superman pose and you're like, oh, okay. And you, you draw it, right? So Poser was a software that made a digital version. The very first version only had like a little wooden guy. It's cute. And then they start adding more and more people and they got more and more real. And then they made all these models that you can now download and purchase and all that stuff. So Daz is a brilliant company that improved upon that software and gave it out for free. You can just download it and start using it. And there's a bunch of tutorials on YouTube on how to use it and all, all that stuff. And so that means that it is a 3D software. Um, you know, you're not going to be doing your own modeling within it, but it's got primitives. So you can place your spheres and your cameras and your lights and all that stuff. And you've got actual people. You can click on the arm 
and the hand and there's little sliders so i want the hand to open more no nope, nope. i want the thumb to move in or you just click on it and drag it like you know like you do and click on the head and then just rotate it and you know ah, i want the mouth open and um and then they have an entire marketplace so the very first experiments i was doing for a graphic novel i just went on daz um the models uh didn't really matter i was able to use just the free ones that come with it um well they have purchased over the years michael and victoria those are like some of their popular humans um but people have made all these crazy you can get outfits you know like you know i want her to look like a mermaid i want her to have like a trashy biker outfit i want him to have like a space you know space marine uh uh asteroid suit with a uh, or astronaut suit with machine gun and i want a spaceship and you can put all these things so i wanted consistency for graphic novels what i was experimenting with so i i wrote a a, a short story and then i uh i ran it through chat gpt his earlier version version of three i think and I say, hey, help me figure out like what to put in each panels, and it did. And I was like, well, that was pretty amazing. Didn't think that was gonna actually work, but it did. Cool. And uh, you know what to say. If at first you do succeed, try not to look so freaking surprised. But so it it worked, and then um, it was by an artist, and uh, you know who's got a cabin in the woods and he's as he paint these things come to life and have very deep philosophical uh discussions with it like why did you bring me to life why did you put me here all this pain all this suffering i didn't ask for this and they run off the line runs off and then he you know paints a naked woman and she comes off and i don't want to ruin the ending for you guys it is a happy ending but not that one chris <laughs> and, uh, and uh but but um uh, you know because it's that one artist, which looks kind of like uh, me coincidentally. I don't know where I, how that happened. You know, these AIs are flaky. And uh, but I, I, I wanted the easel and the painting, and you know, I wanted to look to be consistent and i want particular paintings on the walls behind them and you know i want to be able to move the camera so here's the doors and here's the window and you know but it's gonna have inside and outside the cabin so on daz 3d oh and daz 3d can import models from turbo squid and uh cg trader and all this stuff and so i was able to find very quickly like a cabin and I was able to spend like, I think it was 15 or $30 on Daz and actually get the artist studio set. You know, I had a bunch of crap I didn't need that I like deleted, but I wanted the easel and the, uh, you know, a couple of things. And I'm like, perfect. It had canvases and I just, and, you know, I set it up and then I, I set up, you can set up multiple cameras. So you're not limited to just one camera and trying to, Put it where you want and you set up multiple cameras and just go between them and anytime you need to you know put the different piece so i put the person in the thing and gave it a crap render that took like no time flat and i threw that into stable diffusion with the particular style i wanted and the consistency was fantastic uh if you look at it as graphic novel they're they're not that consistent i mean they are like there's that the unique style you got the particular style of inking and cross hatching and coloring and you can tell that the, the the character is this and that because the character you know they have their their height their build you know like the the things that make them them their their outfits their accessories but yeah, you'll look at each one and it's not like a photo that's like consistent it's it's drawn it's drawn very differently every single time ultimate example of this is uh neil gaiman's um the sandman series which is a very lengthy series and then it's got over 75 books that uh and you know millions of fans and uh what he did was he's got different artists working on each one and so with each issue you actually have uh 
you can tell the, the Sandman is a Sandman because he's gaunt and death is, you know, she's got the, the black T-shirt and she's always smiling and the short hair and stuff. But they can change, but you always know it's them. I, you know, I, I can change shirt, change my hairstyle, I get different glasses or no glasses. You still know it's me, right? But with with uh, with illustration, it what people care about is a story. You know, you cool. You've got the tools to make an epic graphic novel and you can make it as consistent as you want. You've got these tools that are absolutely free. Stable diffusion, free. Open source, better than free. You can go modify it and sell it, right? Daz 3D, free. Um, there's a whole bunch of a blender, free. Um, and then you can buy certain things. If I wanted an exact Ferrari and I wanted to play like I'm talking about like particular year, color, uh, you know, look, I can play I can go and buy one for a couple of bucks. Right? It's way faster than trying to make it myself, which is fun and a good challenge. I'm, I'm talking about in 3D. There's I'm not trying to actually make a Ferrari, obviously, but but in 3D, yeah, there's a bunch of tutorials that you can buy, and it's going to take you a lot of time practice. So I'd much rather spend like the the five dollars I want, like you know, and and have it and just prompt it, and boom, or fifty bucks or something that's yeah, twenty five bucks. A lot of times you'll find something that's like pretty spectacular quality, and not just not just the the outer shell but rather that the doors will open and you know do all this stuff so for no money flat now you can actually not just make graphic novels you can actually make entire like films music videos all this stuff yeah it takes a little effort but um peter gabriel world famous uh you know, singer and musician, um, known for his, uh, you know, Slash hammer. Uh, one of my favorites. Sledge. Keep singing, keep singing. I want to do that for like the last 30 minutes, but I was on a roll. Um, so, um, uh, Landed Confusion. I think it's from 1989 or something like that. That music video cost, I don't know how much it cost, but it cost just the puppets. If you haven't seen this, it's, uh, it's probably it was, it was stop motion, right? It was, it was, it was, it was puppets. Like, it was, it, but it is fantastic. Um, like the whole thing is like a, a dream that, Ronald Reagan has and there's a Tyrannosaurus and they got all these celebrities that they made puppets of. Uh, just the cost of making the puppets was six hundred thousand dollars, right? That doesn't include the puppeteers to operate them, the cameras, the film, because you know, nineteen eighties and then shot on film, developing the films, all the way. Uh, it's just this this spectacular. So it's like more than a million dollars to make this thing. Uh, recently, uh, Peter Gabriel released a bunch of his upcoming music to the Stable Diffusion community and uh, said, hey, go make stuff. So if you go on his YouTube channel, I, I, I had a friend who's a huge Peter Gabriel fan and knows that I'm huge on, you know, wacky stuff, zany stuff and Stable Diffusion. And he sent me this link to this um, music video. Uh, you can look it up, folks. It's called The Court. And the court was created for free by someone on the stable diffusion community by one person. Now, this person's got experience in making music videos and directing and that kind of stuff. Don't I remind me of that in a, in a second when I'm done with this sentence because there, there actually is a, a point I would absolutely love to communicate to everyone about everything about AI. Um, but it was, it was the court was made by one person in I don't know exactly how long it took them, but it's, it's a very zany Peter Gabriel style music video. It's 
to Peter Gabriel's song, and Peter Gabriel released it on his YouTube channel. And I was like, wow, that is amazing. I would love to have some, you know, like a, a global celebrity of that style release my work that I, I made, you know, and it's done by one person who was using like free tools and stuff. So, so you, you literally, the, what AI rec represents, I was talking about iteration earlier. That's for me, that's what it brings me. And that's kind of what it brings everyone. It, it's efficiency and all that stuff. But what AI really represents, if you, if you zoom out beyond even like the, the iteration stuff, it's the democratization of tools. It's the democratization of work. Hey, you want to make a gift for someone that's spectacular and is going to make them cry and you don't feel like spending 40 years like trying to become an artist and learn everything and have all your stuff ridiculed and blah, 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 blah. Great. Go prompt some crap, right? Spend the time thinking about the idea, right? Like I said, you can make a great graphic novel. Come up with a great story, which ChatGPT can help you do. Because now you don't need to spend a lifetime as a writer and, you know, as an editor. Now you've got a built-in editor. Remember, I told you, what What are you doing if you're not spending that $20 a month on ChatGPT4? You've got your editor built in. You've got your writing staff built in. And it will make you the images as well. You can start like, hey, show me what this might look like and help me figure out what do I put in these 20 panels and blah, blah. But, like, work on the story. I'm doing one called Ori's Odyssey, and it's it's pretty zany. It's out there, and uh, yeah, I'm just having conversations with Chat GPT, like to, to to brainstorm, to refine the thing. And there's there's specific writers and storytellers that I like. I'm like, hey, you know, what would uh, uh, what would uh, Michael Dix do? Uh, you know, in in this particular thing, the guys, a, a great storyteller, and. Uh, you know, or this writing formula and all that stuff. So you've, you've got the tools and the internet already is and will continue to be flooded by crap. And because, you know, it's fun and it's easy. And everyone's like, look what I made. And they're all proud of that. It didn't take them long, right? They, they didn't spend the 40 years being an artist. Now they just type the thing. I'm not telling you to spend the 40 years trying to become an artist. But you still want to. So it's the democratization of work. You know, cool. You can make this stuff very easily without having to have spent all these years and learning all this stuff. Now it's just, what is your idea? What do you actually want to make? But make something that's that's meaningful. Make something of a quality. And the point that I was telling you, like, hey, bring me back to that, was here's the mistake that a lot of people are making and will continue to make. And if you want to make money, have a career, um, you know, not lose your existing gig and all that stuff, like, pay attention. Right? Like, study the fundamentals. I'm not telling you to, right, because most people, like, most people are, they don't even think about, they don't even realize or, or have the notion like, oh, yeah, like, this is what it gave me, but I can make it better. Like, they're stuck with the output that it gave them, and it might be great output. But they don't understand what makes it great. Or worse, they might think it's great because they don't understand what makes it great. And now they post it and everything backfires and they don't know what's wrong. So perfect example, best example, one of my favorites, uh, is a judge uh, gave a nice good smack to uh, an attorney. They used chat GPT to make his case and uh, did not even bother to check because, you know, with chat GPT and all these other generative AIs, they hallucinate. Not like I do on mushrooms and stuff, but rather like they just make stuff up and say it very confidently. So uh, this attorney had cases that did not exist in his stuff that he was presenting to the judge. So that, you know, he got a penalty on that. 
And so if you're doing copywriting, yeah, ChatGPT can be a fantastic copywriter, you know, like, hey, make me a sales letter for this in the style of Dan Kennedy and Perry Belcher and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Great, no problem. But if you don't understand what converts and what makes a good sales letter and that kind of stuff, and you just like, you just blindly take what it gives you and you post it on your sales page and you've been like, all oh, right, I got this fantastic sales letter. I could never have written anything like that. And it only took me five minutes. I'm so proud. I'm going to go make millions. And you put like a couple thousand dollars of ad spend and all of a sudden you're, you know, like you got no conversion. And now your brand is being mocked and ridiculed. And you're like, what happened? Because you didn't, you didn't actually read it. You didn't understand. So I see a lot of people that make images like their art. Look, I made art and so good, but they don't know what makes good art. So just like with the copywriting or the legal, you know, people like. So well, people ask me, oh, Ori, aren't you scared now? Anyone can just type what they want, and they don't need artists anymore. Like, yeah, go for it. You know, let me let me know how it works out. I, I encourage. I, Look, you don't have to. I, I recommend you you go and you you play with Mid Journey, and you go and you play with Dolly, and you go and you play with Stable Diffusion on whatever platform you want because it's fun, it's therapeutic. We all grew up like when we were all kids. We all got in trouble for you know like we were all artists. Stuff wasn't good, but we would take the crayons and draw on the wall and the furniture and our parents' clothing. And they'd be like, oh, my God, what did you do? You just ruined that couch. Yeah, or, you know, and just, we made macaroni art and all that stuff. And then someone looked at it and goes, <laughs> your hands look stupid. And you stop being an artist, which kind of is what happened to me, by the way. I, I, back, I was an artist. I didn't realize it. And then in 2001, my... You know, someone told me, oh, go do an art show. And then, I, you know, when you try to find an art show, it was before Google. So, you know, I asked around and I got one of these um, first Friday things and the weather sucked. And I went through all this trouble, barred my buddy's trade show booth for SIGGRAPH. I was, I show up with this thing and these giant paintings and I'm like, oh crap, I think I overdressed for this party because it was me with that monstrosity. And then like these four old ladies with little card tables and like beads for five bucks. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. And you know, weather sucked. So hardly anyone showed up. I don't know, maybe five, six people the whole night. I didn't sell anything. Well, no, I didn't sell anything. I guess I'm not an artist. Stop making art for 10 years. And you already heard that story, but so that's how that story started, right? So, but I have an understanding. So if, if we're talking imagery here, right? It depends on what, what you're using the imagery for. We've been talking about AI art is how to open it, but you know, this also works for making your own stock photos, right? Because you can get a in STO, you get duplicate content penalties, right? Uh, and stock photo by definitions is duplicate content. So you're paying someone to use the same picture that everyone else is using. Now you can take that same picture run it through stable diffusion or mid journey with a prompt and now you get something that it has the same vibe but now it's 100 percent original and you're not going to get penalized for it right or if you're making an image and you you want to use it for um anything right you want to make a graphic novel great but go on Udemy or any of those uh, Coursera. No, Coursera is a teacher platform. Go on Udemy or uh, any of those other ones that there's like tons of uh, learning platforms, including YouTube, obviously. But uh, YouTube is more episodic, whereas like Udemy has like, oh, here's a course on this. Here's a course on that. And, and if you want to do graphic novels, great. Like and go or you have a course too. Right? I do have a course. You want to, as we wrap up here, do you want to tell people about your course? Uh, yeah, I just got a, a, a new, uh, uh, domain for it. And, um, that is image generation dot Academy. And, uh, there's a couple of uh, Academy. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, there, there's what what I offer to you know, there's YouTube and you'll learn a ton of stuff. The problem is that there's so much stuff and it's so confusing. And so 
what I'm doing is each month I show you kind of like some of the things that I'm working on and some of the stuff and, you know, like the breakdown. And yeah, I'm not trying to show you just one program. Like, look, I made this a mid-journey. I took it into this program and I did this. Blah, blah, blah. But there's different levels. Like, not only do I like teach what's new in the industry and in these tools and I'm good at simplifying things uh, is what I'm known for. I had a WordPress course back in the day. I had uh yeah, uh, I had a testimonial from a nine-year-old girl that only had one hand and was making WordPress course. I mean, a nine-year-old kid with one hand can do it. What's your excuse, right? And I also had like an 84-year-old lady making WordPress sites whose son did not, he bought her my course kind of as a joke. Like he didn't expect her to, you know, it's just like, ah, she'll leave me alone for a couple of weeks. And then she sent him back like the entire site. And he's like, oh, dang. And, but, but with this, because this stuff, evolved so much i have i have a couple of levels i have the one where you know yeah come and learn i'll teach you some new stuff each month like what's new and what i'm working on and uh that kind of stuff but also uh you know i take questions and stuff but the the higher version is if you're you know an entrepreneur if you're or you're trying to make a career out of something and you have specific things you're trying to, to work on you send me, you know, send me messages, uh, and I will actually like explain to you how to do the thing. So I'll save you those hundreds or even thousands of hours of going through YouTube and trying to figure out what is that concept. We're like, oh, you know, like yeah, you can do that. That thing will take you like dozens of hours, or you can go and grab this file from here, and then I'll I'll make you like a rough version of it, or I can give you feedback on your projects that you're working on um because none of those people on youtube are gonna do that for you you know like don't play how to do this stuff but now you're like oh here's what i did with it i'm like, oh, busy making my next youtube video so good luck um that yeah, sounds that's, great sounds yeah. great. well thank uh, you oh were you gonna say something oh no i was just gonna say like this, this, this stuff is just it, it's a lot of fun. It's therapeutic. Uh, it, it, it really, uh, it, it allows you to create like really unique gift, but it allows you to, to bring back that joy that you had as a kid, you know, drawing on your parents' furniture and walls, but without getting into trouble, without having noxious fumes or making a mess or anything. It, most of it is free or pretty inexpensive, and you can just wow your friends, wow yourself, and just, um, yeah, there's obviously a million professional uses as well, but it's just it's so much fun. Um, you, you get a lot of flow moments. You're like, oh, where yeah. did the day go? <laughs> so definitely, yeah. definitely. Well, thank you, Ori, so much for coming on the show and sharing your wisdom with us. And uh, definitely be checking out your course too. So thank you so much again for coming on onto this show. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Anytime you need me, I'm there.